Let's drain it. Let's take it and leave it out for the sunrise. We're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Think you could blow up our warehouse and get away with it? Ah, lick. <laughs> Let's pull out its eyes and its tongue and its teeth. I want its teeth. Camarilla fuck. Boys, I think we could all use a little entertainment. Those of you sitting in the first few rows will get wet. Son of a bitch! Leave. There's three of us, Rodriguez. Yeah. <laughs> Three of us. What are you gonna do? Shoot us? This ain't over. We'll find you. You too, Rodriguez. You're both dead. Nobody messes with the Sabbat and lives. Keep moving. Trouble sure seems to like you. Good effort. Execution needs a little work. You look like shit. Name's Nines. Should have been more careful, newbie. This ain't the burbs. You do that. Me? I got things to deal with. Why don't you pay me a visit at the last round tonight? I don't know what you've heard so far, but it's time you heard the real story. This is a mean existence. Stay out of trouble, kid. Hey there, Missy. Small world, eh? Yep, after that gallery, I, I didn't think I'd be able to get a job guarding a room full of jack squat from the boogity man. <laughs> but then I get a call offering me this sweet night shift slot, and I'm back in the security game. Ah, well, enough about my lucky break. Uh, you, uh, here to see one of the bigwigs, Missy? Would that be Sebastian LaCroix of the LaCroix Foundation, or Dwayne LaCroix of Insurrection Baby Formula Company? Uh, okay then. Mr. LaCroix, he told me to expect someone fitting your description sometime tonight. You go right on up. Yeah, uh, you have a good power meeting, or, uh, whatever it is you types do up there. If you need any security, well, you just ring the front desk and ask for Officer Chunk. That's me, in case you were wondering. Ah, yeah, I, I get that all the time. The name goes back to my football days. Oh, actually, uh, my fantasy football days uh, at the station. Stationarium. That was this office supply outlet mall I used to watch. Hey, you kids! No skating in the parking lot! <laughs> that was me. There you are. I was informed of your presence in the building. Since you're here, I'll take the liberty of assuming you've destroyed the warehouse. This is correct, yes? Most excellent. I had no doubt you'd prove my decision a prudent one. I trust you encountered no impediments to your progress on account of my personnel. That is the answer I like to hear. You've done well, circumstances being what they were. I will admit, not many in your position would have overcome such a trial. But don't misunderstand me. It was no fool's errand. You may yet prove to be a genuine asset. It's a bit disturbing the lack of talent within this organization as of late. Tell me, what would you say to doing a bit of reconnaissance for me? There have been whispers, rumors spreading around the kindred community concerning the Elizabeth Dane, the cargo ship that was towed into port recently. Have you heard of it? The Dane was found out at sea. The reports say it was without crew, but they have yet to report a fate of said crew. The police are investigating the Dane as we speak. Even the Nosferatu have little information on what's been found. However, the reason the ship has caused such speculation 
is because it was transporting an object called the Ankaran sarcophagus. Now, I'm not one to predicate a decision based on conjecture, so what I need is fact. And more importantly, I need evidence that the occurrences on the Dane were not supernatural in nature, and in no way relate to this Ankaran sarcophagus. You have three objectives. One, I want you to examine the sarcophagus for anything unusual. You may sense something peculiar about the sarcophagus. In fact, many kindred in the city have reported an uneasiness in the air since the Dane's arrival. Do not, under any circumstances, open the Ankaran sarcophagus. Secondly, the police have begun their investigation. Find out what they have concluded thus far. Thirdly, take the cargo manifest for the ship. I want to find out what else it was carrying. The last thing we want is police aware of our existence, so be careful what you do in front of them. And unlike the warehouse, you cannot wholesale slaughter a ship full of lawmen without consequences. Is this understood? Good. Oh, and it has come to my attention that you had an encounter with Nines Rodriguez earlier. The man so does love to throw that cretinous charm of his brashly about. What exactly did Mr. Rodriguez say? I see. Then, you should go humor the by-the-numbers rhetoric he's so desperately aching to spew. Oh, please, before the chance of fascist oppressor from that dive of theirs clog the air and choke the local kine. Give the Anarch community my regards. Baby girl, I saw you coming from down the street and I started praying to the Lord to find it in his heart to send you to me and hallelujah if he didn't come through for me. Welcome to Fat Larry's Trucker Mac. I am the proprietor and salesman of the month several years in a row. The ladies call me, oh God, but you can call me Fat Larry with a F-A-T because there's more of me to love. Now, that is a legitimate question. But a better question to be, what don't I got in this truck? Because at Fat Larry's, my motto is, everything's got a price, but I probably know somebody who can get it anyway. Nah, now that's what I like to hear. But it's like this. I say my best stuff for select clientele. Now that don't mean I don't appreciate your business. It's just, you know, business.
Well, if it ain't the talk of the town, post a child for Camarilla Benevolence. What does the prince have his little bitch doing today? Nines is expecting you. Have some manners and don't wear out your welcome. I'm Skelter. Act up again, and I'll be the one showing your ashes to the door. So then go on up and see her. You're free to do as you please here. You showed up. Good. Here's what I gotta tell you. And so you know, I don't lecture, I don't rap, I'm no bureaucrat. I'm just a guy out of nowhere came to be involved in something 500 times bigger than you and me. You got a right to know the score. The Camarilla? This is the short of it. They operate a lot like a pyramid scheme. There's a bunch of these old timers at the top with God only knows what plots in mind. They lose their power, they die. They sired more to carry out their plans, and looking for a little power than those kindred sired for their own schemes, and so on and on and on. It hurts my head just thinking about the mess. What it works out to is this. Only a few people at the top have any real power. Them's fighting words, newbie. But you're young and stupid, so I won't make an example out of you. See, the Camarilla claims all of us are members, even if we don't want to be, which is, of course, the biggest load of horseshit a man ever heard. I learned the way of this world during the Depression. Bunch of old rich bastards screwed the country. But did they suffer? No. The little people suffered. You can't trust the people at the top. The world would be a better place without them. All you can do is get a group of people together who aren't assholes. Find a place to put your feet up and make some examples of the quote-unquote elite to keep the rest the hell out. Everyone's an equal here. The same thing this country used to be about. That's what L.A. has been. An anarch free state. The Camarilla was kicked out on their ass a long time ago. We, the Anarchs, didn't want to play their politics anymore. Now LaCroix and crew pop in like they never left? Uh Uh-uh. No goddamn way. Their laws don't apply to us. I got their meeting right here. LaCroix represents everything I hate. The Camarilla, stuck-up aristocrats, rich businessmen, crooked politicians. The only place LaCroix belongs is in an urn. No such thing. And again, newbie, don't throw those kind of words around lightly. You're risking a beatdown. I fought to keep L.A. free since I was embraced. Long time later, I'm one of the only ones left that hasn't bitted or switched sides. The most veteran soldier on the battlefield. Here's what I tell all the new blood. One, you get careless, that blood will make you into a monster. But you rampage around here, you get put down. Two, don't kill when you feed. No reason to. In this city, there's lots of ways to slake the beast without leaving a trail of dead. Three, the Camarilla's full of shit. Four, watch your back, always. And lastly, learn how to fight. Because a speech ain't going to save your ass when you're staring down the barrel of a shotgun. After picking your ass up off the pavement back there, yeah, I can tell you don't even know the basics. Hold your hands up like this and keep your body at an angle. Makes you harder to hit. Keep your thumbs out of your fists and put your weight into your punches. L.A.'s the school of hard knocks, so keep your friends close and your enemies in a barbecue pit. Once you square things with LaCroix, don't give that son of a bitch the time of night. I got my eye on you, kid. Sabat chase you in here, Cammy. <sighs> Heard nine saved your ass again. You think LaCroix would have stopped counting his money long enough to get your back, Jack? Oh, ho, ho. you want to know what my problem is? All right, I'll tell you what my problem is. You ready? You are my goddamn problem. Anyone who would lay it down for some cape in an ivory tower deserves what they get. Oh, that's real. Let me put it in perspective for you. The Camarilla claims every kindred's part of the organization regardless. You do something they don't like, well, you're Camarilla, so you get punished under their laws, like it or not. I'm Damsel, den mother of these mothers, and one pissed bitch since LaCroix rolled in. Don't even joke about bad blood at a time like this. Don't you know we've got a plague bearer around here? A plague bearer's a fool that doesn't care who they feed from. 
Yeah, I know what you're thinking. We can't get sick, but the kind can. And kindred that feed on them start spreading disease. Enough gets sick, it's an epidemic. CDC's in town as we speak. Seen old yeller? May sound cruel, but it's necessary. If someone puts together two and two as to the real cause of an outbreak of blood-borne diseases, guess what happens? So the plague bearers got to be found and put down. If the Camarilla really gives a damn, they'll help us out. One of our boy's ghouls, name's Paul, lives nearby in the Skyline Apartments. Been a stranger lately. Looked like death last time he was here. Said he didn't get bit, but maybe you can get more info out of him. Wait. If Paul's not talking, you might want to start questioning the homeless pot. So many have been dying lately that it takes the city a few days to pick up the bodies. Uh, what's up? There's this girl who's been making a lot of noise lately. She's a real pain in the ass. She's a ghoul of this one Toreador creep who disappeared. Her name is Patty. She hangs out in the clubs downtown. She used to show up around here and act like she was everybody's best friend. It was all fun and games until her vampire sugar daddy stopped calling. Now she can't get her blood fixed and shit ain't so fun no more. Man, she's been told he was dead. She don't listen. Just ask again louder. Damn junkie. She's gonna make a scene and get us all some real heat. Vampire hunters, man. You start doing stupid shit and breaking the masquerade, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Trust me, hunters are the kind of trouble you don't want. She's crossed the line. Only time that mouth ain't blabbing is when it's sucking vampire blood. She's gotta disappear. Do this, and we'll keep it our little secret, you hear? All right, have fun. I'd love to do this one myself, but I know her sire. Just let me know when it's done. Well, well, looky who made it back in one piece. Out in Santa Monica, kiddo. <laughs> I can't imagine you did. Probably too busy getting pushed around by every vampire with a week of seniority over you, am I right? That's usually the way the story goes. Same old bullshit politics from when you were alive, huh? Don't it make you just want to rip somebody's spine out? What? You saying that's just me? <laughs> yeah, not a moment too soon, huh? <laughs> he said you guys let those sabat go, too. Nines must be getting soft. How could you pass up that kind of fun? Well, well he was left sireless, too. I don't know, maybe that's it. Well, he's got a thing for the little guy. Someone must have put a word out. Now, here's an interesting little scenario. I'm just gonna run this by you, see what you think. What if the prince got the word out to the Sabbat that you were the one to blow up their warehouse? Hey, it's just a theory, man, but who else is gonna be watching you so closely, knowing where you're going and all that? It's how the Camarilla works, kiddo, trust me. I've been dealing with these slimy shits for a few centuries now. Politics. The stuff that makes the rich get richer keeps the powerful in power. Look at why you're out in Santa Monica in the first place. Cause Prince LaCroix said so. Cause he never thought you'd make it back. If Nines didn't stand up for you in the courtroom, you would have been toast right there, man. Everybody knows that. It's bullshit, Camarilla Law. You gotta get it approved before you sire anyone. Vampire population control, fascist crap. LaCroix wanted to look like the strong leader upholding the law. Ha 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 ha! Ah, kid, I never answered a no man in life. Now I sure as shit ain't taking orders from a vampire with a suit and a funny name. And when I die again, the devil's gonna have to cut me a deal if he wants my ass. Besides, I never trust anybody with an X in their name. Public relations, man. Calculated risk. Ventures are born in a boardroom. 
When Nines called him out, LaCroix realized it was time to show a carefully measured dose of Camarilla compassion. LaCroix is the boss of the Camarilla in L.A. That's it. <laughs> LaCroix is the boss. <laughs> That's rich. The free living dead, kiddo. A lot of people like to use the label Anarchs. Whatever the hell that means. Anarchs. It does got a nice kick to it, though, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's us, so I'm told. What'd you want to know? Yeah, I could tell you about the history of the movement about our struggle. <laughs> What's any of that shit mean, anyway? Do we want to sit through history class here? I'm no scholar, kid, but I've been around. Seen more and done more than most vampires ever will. I don't know that our situation's ever gonna be easy. But some things you gotta decide are worth fighting for. Fight harder than the other son of a bitch. Every time I yank a jawbone from a skull and ram it in an eye socket, I know I'm building a better future. <laughs> you bet, kid. Me? <laughs> I never had much patience for negotiations. Everyone can live or burn. It's up to them. Yeah, I'm not sure the story on most of them. Nine's crew. Bruja. Most everyone here has Bruja blood. Huh? What do you want? Yeah? Well, I'd feel a lot more like talking if you gave me a few bucks, you know? How about a 20 to lubricate the old vocal cords? Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know too much about nothing, but I know that Tin Can Bill's been telling some crazy stories about how he's got sick and all. Something about a monster or some such. You can usually find him down in his alleyway, just across from that bar nearby. Who's there, huh? Old Bill can't see too good these days. Is that you, Betty? I ain't got no booze tonight, so you may as well get the hell out of here. Yeah, I might be able to. <coughs> but I'm awful thirsty tonight, miss. Could you spare five bucks for a man who's been down on his luck? <laughs> Thank you much. <coughs> I'm going to have to go pick up some hooch. <laughs> For medicinal purposes, you know. <laughs> now, I know you ain't going to believe old Bill, because I've been telling my friends of the cops and everyone since it happened. And people just say that it's the hooch talking and nothing more. It was a monster, you see. Monster with his face all twisted and ugly, teeth longer than your finger, and these eyes piss yellow and full of hate. I've never seen eyes like that before, still giving me bad dreams. He grabbed me, threw me over his shoulder, took me to the bad place, the dark place. <laughs> oh, God, the smell, worse than anything I've. And then he bit me, my neck. Oh, God. It was horrible. Don't remember too much after that. Blacked out and woke up here in my alley. <coughs> Haven't been feeling too well since then. <coughs> Came up through the sewers, he did. Just around the corner there. <coughs> Don't want to go back to the bad place, friend. <coughs> Don't let the monster come back and take me there.
Greetings, Neonate. Might I assume you received my invitation? I have been looking forward to meeting you for quite some time. Strauss. Maximilian Strauss. I am the regent of this chantry. Welcome. Ah, yes, forgive me. I forget that you are not embraced within the pyramid. We share the same blood, you and I, but there is much you have yet to learn about our clan. Yes, this new life in which you find yourself undoubtedly seems strange. I'm sure you have many questions, young one. I will answer those which I am able. The pyramid is the social structure of our clan, with each level of advancement watched over by the next. There are apprentices here at the Chantry who are my charges, and I have a lord who watches over me and other local regents, and so on. In most cases, Tremere are very selective about who they embrace and how it is done. There are traditions and laws that we adhere to, so the circumstances of your embrace were, let us say, unconventional. Therefore, you are outside the pyramid. Such things are possible, young one, but you would have to prove your worth to the clan before it would even be a consideration. Tremere guard their secrets well. Perhaps it is something we will speak of later. A chantry is a local gathering place for those of the Tremere clan. I live here as do apprentices from time to time. A regent is the leader of a chantry, as well as a teacher to young Tremere apprentices who are studying the mysteries of our clan. Let me give you some advice, young one. Your survival in kindred society will often depend on your ability to find out yourself what is going on around you. Remember that well. As for what is going on here in downtown, the word on everyone's lips, kindred or kind, seems to be epidemic. It seems that disease has been spreading at an alarming rate throughout the downtown population. Considering our particular appetites, the local kindred are more than concerned about these developments. Yes, indeed. My opinion is that the local anarchs are responsible for these outbreaks. Their precipitous indulgence of certain passions often leads to such things. Ergo, their need for the watchful eye of the Camarilla. I see. Most disappointing, Neonate. You seem to show a startling lack of concern when choosing your associates in this new life. I pray that their lawless proclivities do not ultimately affect your own standing among your other peers. Hmm, an interesting proposition. If you succeed in finding the cause of this epidemic and putting an end to it, I will compensate you appropriately for your efforts. I will ponder the nature of your payment while you are gone. Believe me, I will treat you fairly, Neonate, and your service to the Camarilla won't be forgotten. Very well. shooting for my show. I'm a parapsychologist. Haunted L.A. Oh, oh, God, it was right behind me. We've got to get out of here. 
Look, I'll level with you. We, we, we usually fake these things, you know, ghosts of this. That's all bullshit. We were setting up downstairs, and weird shit started happening. My crew, they all started disappearing. I, I don't know what's happening. No, no, don't go down there. We've got to get out. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Real terror is not the sight of death. It is the fear of death. What is the fear of death? Terror of the unknown. Is it these eyes you peer into? No. I am not the unknown. You and I are closer kin than you and it were. Drinking blood to sustain your death, you are damned, yes? What if, besides the blood of the living, you had to eat pounds of their flesh to maintain that thin facade of life? What would you call it? Twice damned? We drink blood. I eat flesh. Kine eat food. But kine think us a monster. Without remorse, they would burn our body twice over to be certain we were destroyed. What is unnatural for some is vital for others. My birth name I tell no one. You may address me as Pisha. Pisha was the name of my companion and lover in a time before my death, 230 years ago. She has no need of it anymore. My stay in this city is transitory. I seek relics of the occult traced here and would trade similar artifacts to acquire them. But if you wish to bargain with me, the kind upstairs must be sent down here. He has seen too much. Tell him this was all a ruse. His friends playing a joke. He will come. He must come down here. If he leaves, the frail disguise we wear for mortals will be seen through. Eventually.
Say now, Wonder Girl, seeing the kind of commando gear you been stocking up on, you ain't just using that stuff for keeping the neighbors away from your shit, is you? Wow, 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 that's your business, okay. I just figured somebody with a shopping list like yours might be up for a little action czar, all right? Yo, I need a hardcore pimp killing Cleopatra Jones for a supersized skull. Straight up Foxy Pam Grill style. Still with me? Yo, here's what's going down. I got a tip that the Chinatown Tone and some local boys are meet down at a nearby parking garage to carry out a business deal. Now, I can't tell you what they is exchanging, but let's just say a certain client of mine is ready to drop some Uncle Sam-sized bucks to acquire what's in briefcase number one. You get it for me, I'ma not only give you a cut, but I roll out my special stock as well. Now, how that sound? Yo, baby, why you gotta shake me down like that? If I hadn't just got my foot out of cast, I'd do it myself, but... Yeah, it's got to be that way? Fine. You got a discount. But only after I get the briefcase. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. Now, if you're the straight-out hard-boiled Terminator type, I'd suggest you buy some heavy firepower before you roll up to the parking garage. You need anything? Quiet, bitch. Help! Help! Help anyone, please! God, you run your mouth a lot. I got a way to keep her from talking. She can keep screaming, though. <laughs> I like it when they scream. <laughs> Me too. Hey, where you going, man? Shithole of a city is falling apart. City of Angels, my ass. I'm glad you wasted those bastards. They deserved it. Listen, I'm really grateful. I don't really have any money or anything, but how about a freebie? Anytime you want it, okay? I mean, if you're into that sort of thing, you know? Hospital, but in my crew, are they? Are they? Really? A, a joke? <laughs> a joke? <laughs> <laughs> 
a joke, right? <laughs> oh, real funny. Oh, you got me good. <laughs> I'm going to hurt some people very badly. <laughs> I knew you'd talk to me. I swear you were all, like, totally drawn to me. I'm surprised I don't know you. I usually meet all the L.A. vampires out on the scene. Not a lot of you out tonight, which is weird, because I don't know of any parties going on. No, come on. It's totally cool. I'm Patty. Seriously, everyone knows me. Besides, I just wanted to ask you if you've seen someone. His name is Kent Allen Ryan. He's a Toreador. Really good looking, dresses really well, like all Prada usually. You are totally awesome. It just goes to show you that you don't have to dress cute or care what you look like to be a cool girl. <laughs> So, where is Kent? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is totally Kent. He's so like that. I better go find him. He needs my help to do anything. Thanks again. Um. <laughs> Me? Hi, Paul. It's Hannah. Just calling to see how you are. 
I hope I didn't give you what I've got. Ugh, I feel like crap. Actually, I need to ask you a favor. Could you pick me up some cold medicine at the store? <laughs> I hate to bother you, but I can't seem to get out of bed. The code on my door is 1203. Hey, listen, I, uh... I had a really good time the other night. Maybe we can do it again sometime. Sorry, I'm rambling. Okay, bye. okay with him? <coughs> I don't really know. I, I've i taken all kinds of medicine, but I can't seem to get rid of it. I, I feel like I got a fever and a sore throat. <coughs> I'm real weak. Can't seem to get out of bed. What day is it? I, I can't remember. Well, I think I got sick from one of my <coughs> clients. I was feeling fine until I, I, uh, I saw her a few days ago. She was just a woman who called. She, uh, she found my ad in the newspaper. <coughs> Usually only do business with referrals, you know, but she was offered a lot of money. <coughs> Her name was Jezebel. Jezebel Locke. I'm usually not too good with names, you know, but hers was so strange. <coughs> I can't seem to get it out of my head. Yeah, I mean, I think so. <coughs> to tell you the truth, I don't really remember a whole lot about that night, you know. <coughs> Everything's a little blurry, you know. I mean, I'm not usually, you know, into women. But I remember feeling so attracted to her. I thought she was the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. <coughs> well, the next thing that's clear <coughs> is when I woke up the next morning... <coughs> I've been feeling too well since then. To tell you the truth, I have other friends who've who've uh, worked with her, and they're not doing so hot either, you know. <coughs> she had a room at the Empire Hotel. I can't remember the number. <coughs> hey, are you sure that Paul's okay? He's not sick, is he? <coughs> Good. He he's a nice guy. I hope he calls me again sometime. I hope so. I really do.
The Kind's fate was sealed the moment he entered. Do not waste time debating the morality. If a man walks into a tiger's domain, it may result in his being devoured. So it has. That girl you sent to me. I've grown used to masquerading as one of them and seeking something suitably feeble enough to cull from the herd. That's the first time I've had one delivered. Yes, I am searching for two items I have tracked to this area. One, I believe, may be in one of the local museums. I have not yet searched them all. The other, I believe, to be in the Giovanni's possession, though I have not confirmed it. For these items, I will exchange items of similar worth. A fetish is described in a 19th century chronicle of a British platoon's encounter with a local tribe. Soldiers would go missing in the night and be replaced by these fetishes. It may be valuable to my studies. It is used to communicate with certain entities otherworldly. It is a tome called the Voce del Morte. Should you find yourself within the walls of the Giovanni, seize the opportunity and take it, for they will make sure you never have another. Hey, you, hey, what can I say? You preserve my ass. I truly appreciate you not saying anything, and I want you to know I take care of those who do me favors. So from now on, you need equipment, info, you come see me at my apartment. Don't hesitate. I tell you, that blood you guys got's an amazing thing. Help close up a few wounds. This back alley patch fixed up the rest. I needed that beating. Good reminder not to overestimate my ability. Last time it's gonna happen. Yo, Pally, over here. Ah, oh, for Christ's sakes. Tell Jacobson if he plans on making editor-in-chief, he's gotta start working with me. I can't keep getting him these scoops if he's going to send high school journalists who don't know enough to wear something that would blend in. Jeez, what kind of wood sting? Don't think to at least show dressed up like an investigator, a Coast Guard guy, something. I mean, didn't you ever see Fletch? What, are they just handing out those diplomas nowadays? All right, look, I got you a copy of the initial report, and I can get you into the cabin, but you got to make yourself real scarce after that. Anybody catches you, I don't know you. And no goddamn flash photography, brainchild. Hold up a sec. Heinz to Marsh. Heinz to Marsh. Marsh, they need you up in the bridge. Over. There. The security room will be clear. Head down the stairs behind you and stay low. When you get down there, wait for me to call off the guy guarding gangway A. As soon as he leaves, get your ass moving and don't let him see you. I'll give you a couple of minutes, but don't dilly-dally. In and out, okay? Don't forget to stay out of sight. If anyone sees you, you're on your own. Take the stairs up to the security room. There'll be a computer in there. The password is Lighthouse. Lighthouse. All one word. You getting all this? Now get a move on. And don't forget to tell Jacobson I get double my usual fee for this one. Heinz to Jacobson, uh, Anderson. Heinz to Anderson, come in, Anderson. Come check this out. I just saw a baleen whale. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah.